Hello and welcome to a new video. When you create a variable in any program, this variable will have a location inside your memory. So for example, here we are creating a variable x with value 5 inside the memory. This has some specific location. And this location is uh, or has an address. The address is just a number. For example, here 1002. Now, 1002 is the address of the variable x, or the location in memory of the variable x. Now, we can get the address of any variable using the ampersand sign. Remember from scanf, when we discussed the scanf function, we said scanf takes the address of a variable. How can you get the address using the ampersand? So, x here itself is 5, however, ampersand x is the address of x, which is, in our case, 1002. Any address we will discuss in this video is just hypothetical. We are just assuming um, random numbers. Okay, so the address of x is 1002. I would like to store this address inside a variable y. Now, what should be the data type of this variable? The first thing you ask yourself is the following. The address here belongs to a variable of what data type? Basically, what, does the, what is the data type of x? The data type of x is integer. So y here will be storing an address of an integer. So the data type of y is int star. What is int, int star? Int star is a new data type, which we will call pointer to integer. We are just basically saying that y is a variable that is storing the address of a different variable. That different variable is of type integer. Okay, so let's see this in code. If you come down below here, write int star y equal to, well, let's put them in two different lines. So y here will be the address of x. Again, we are declaring y to be of type pointer to integer, and inside y I'm storing the address of x. So, what is the case when we have a variable w of type double and w is 3.9, for example? How will you get the address and store it in a variable? So again, in memory, you have w 3.9. The address assume is 900. Again, this is just hypothetical address. Now, the address of W, you will get it by the ampersand. This is 900. You will store this inside a variable called A, for example. What is the data type of A? It should be double star. Why double star? Because A is storing the address of a double variable. So this is what we call pointer to double. Okay. All right, so let's get back to our um, example with x and y. Right here, I would like to print x itself. Now, if I do this, I will unsurprisingly see Okay, what is the issue? All right. Let's try again. Okay. Now I have five. Just I'm printing x, x is five. Now, here I am printing the value of x using the variable itself. This is called direct access. Now, you can access five using the pointer. Now, how can you do this? I would like to access 5 using the pointer. 
the pointer is y, remember? Now, how can we do this? y itself is the address. So in memory, you have x storing five, and this is the address of x, and you have y storing the address of x, just like this. So the value of y is 1002. I don't want 1002, I want five itself. So how can you move from 1002 to five? You can use the star operation. So right here, before y, put a star sign, and I missed the semicolon. Run this again, you get five and five. So what we have here is we have indirect access. What is the meaning of indirect access? We use the pointer and the star operation to go from y to x, to go from the pointer or the address to the actual variable. So you can see that there are two usages of the star uh, symbol. You can use it with indirect access, where you move from you move from the address to the actual variable and you can also use it for declaration declaration of pointers for example like in the statement right here okay so just uh, make sure you differentiate between these two uh, usages basically if you have a data type like int or double then a star then the star here is just part of the declaration. The star in this case is part of the declaration. It's part of the data type, okay? But when you see it without a data type, like in this case, then this just means I am moving from Y to X and inside X I am storing I'm storing five. Okay, let's do this. Um, let's see another example of indirect access. So star y equal to 10. Now if I print x again, I see that I'm printing 10, even though I did not change x explicitly. So this is again an example of indirect access. One more time, what we are doing is the following. You are moving from y to x using the star operation. And inside x, I'm going to store 10. Okay, let's move to the next example. Now, in this example, I have two variables m and n. Now, these two variables will have 10 and 5 as values. Then I'm going to create two additional variables mb and nb. Now, what we have here is we have, just like any variables, uh, you have addresses. So assume the address of M is 100, the address of N is, two, is 200. What I am storing in MB is the address of M, so I am storing 100. And inside MB, I will store the address of N, which is 200. Okay. Then you have this assignment statement. You have MB, star MB, what is uh, star MB? Star MB means move from the actual, from the address to the actual variable. So star MB just means M itself. This is equal to star MB, which we agree is M plus star MB. Star MB, remember, whenever we have the star operation, we move from the address to the actual variable. This is n. So what is m? The content of m. This is 10. 
plus the content of n, which is five, store it inside m. So inside m instead of 10, I am storing 15. Okay, notice that even though we are assigning to, we are not assigning to mb, we are not changing this, no, we are changing star mb. Star mb means not mb itself, but whatever uh, variable mb has the address of. Okay, same story for the second assignment statement. So what we have here is the following star in b star in b means n equal to star in b which is n minus star in b which is n now it is m minus n this is 10 you store 10 inside n so this will be just 10. now later i am printing mb star in b n star in b but m and star in b are just the same same thing right same thing for n and star in b. On this, you get 15, 15, and 10, 10. One last thing before we uh, finish this video is the following example. You might see um, two variation of the same code. So basically, here you have x uh, equal five, pointer y, and y I'm storing the address of x, and then I'm storing nine inside X by using the address inside Y. Now, this is the same code, except that these two steps are written in one line, okay? So the declaration and initialization is written as one statement. So when we see int star Y equal ampersand X, which variable I am changing here? Again, and when I say star y equal nine, what variable I am changing here? Now, in this case, I am assigning to x, remember? Just like the previous example, y has the address of x so star y will make us move from from uh, y itself to x however in this case right here we are assigning to y itself so why do we have this two different cases even though you have a star here Y, we are assigning to Y here, but assigning to X in this case. Remember what we said about the star operation? We said that the star has two usages, declaration and indirect access. This statement here is declaration, right? So, it's part of the data type, basically. It's part of the data type because we have int before it. So since it's part of the data type, we are changing y itself. However, here, this is not declaration. You don't see int or double or anything. So this is basically indirect access. We don't want to change y, we want to change x. I hope this was clear and I will see you in the next video.